Learning to Own It, Your Business and Your Life, with Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. In this podcast, we're going to cover everything you need to embrace to become a successful entrepreneur, marketing, money, and much, much more. How to create a business doing just what you love. How to own it, your business and your life. This one will be fast, funny, feisty, and very lively. So sit back and enjoy the show. I'm a bit early, as you may have noticed. Yes, but notice I didn't fall off my chair. And here I am. Yes. Ready, prepared. Of course you are. Of course you are. Right. Indeed. So, where shall we start then? We'll start with your week. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's been Nelson's birthday this week. Last Yay, week. Nelson. Go, Nels. Yeah, Nels 22. Can you believe it? There was well, such Yes. Idiot, weren't they? <laughs> I can believe it because he was 21 last year. I yeah. know what you're saying, yeah. Hulking like brute he is now. <laughs> he still insists on coming sitting on my knee sometimes. Oh, <laughs> he's a love. I know. And um, yes, it's been a good week. I've had a really good time staying here. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. It's like being um, a flatmate again. We've all got I was going to say, it's like being a kid, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's like being a teenager. Oh, we've all got our own shelves in the fridge now because <laughs> we've decided we all eat such different food. We need to just shop separately, apart from the basics. And, um, and, and so that ends up with, you know, my shelf actually just after Nelson's birthday was entirely full of cake. <laughs> but, uh, but now it's replaced itself with vegetables and prawns. And then Phoebe's shelf is largely anything to do with cheese and pasta. And then Nelson's is um, cause he's a, a pescatorian. So um, he's got lots and lots and lots of things like salmon and, and stuff like that. So it's all a... And then when you go to cook, you always find you're, you're missing one ingredient. So it's, can I borrow some of your mushrooms? <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Well, they'll never be returned. No, indeed. <laughs> but it's quite funny. They've even laid, someone's put a label on. So I'm, I'm um, NC and then there's PS and NS. And it's just hilarious. It really is. <laughs> uh, and, but then we had an impromptu Tuesday night sort of chat. They, they Phoebe went out to the pub to meet a friend of hers who's going for a bit of a difficult time. And um, came back with about five or six people, and they all proceeded to eat pizza, um, cook, cook and eat pizzas. And uh, they stayed till about one in the morning. So that was, you know, again, a bit of. I could have gone into my bedroom and closed the door, but I didn't want to. They, they said, stay with us, mum. So. <laughs> so I stayed up. It was quite good fun. Sure. Uh, yeah, just like, being a, just like being a teenager again. Mm. And uh, yeah, we, we, we wrote us, you know, we've all got jobs now around for housework because um, there's no point in trying to get Nelson to wash up all the time because he's coming and going more than we are. So the deal is Phoebe and I wash up and he puts away whenever he goes into the kitchen and he also puts the bins out. Okay. It's all working fine. I'm okay. bringing my man management skills to the fore. <laughs> yeah, and you've divided those chores into pink jobs and blue jobs. Well, not not on purpose, I must say, because um, Phoebe's a strong little thing. So she, she took the bins out last week because he wasn't here. But it's down to, you know, we're on the second floor here and it can only, mm. you can only put them out one night a week. So yes. if you get it, you've absolutely yes. had it. Yes. Now, I'm the bin monitor, as you know. I even diarise that. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you why I do because it's green bin, black bin, green bin, black bin. Oh, I know. Yes, the recycling thing's quite a mm. pain, isn't it? But never mm. mind. Never mind. Better than um, well, Greece. Everyone used to take them to the communal bins, and then they used to get taken off elsewhere. Yes, yes. We all assumed to the big tip in the Polyp- northern Polyphenes. Well, it turns out there's a local tip that nobody knew about. Well, and also in Saint Martin, they burn it, which means it sends yeah. it sends off this toxic smoke across the island for ages. It's bad news how they do it yeah. overseas often. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it really is. So um, that's, that's my week. What about yours? Um, well, um, last week I was doing these busy jobs, haircut, car service, if you remember, and um, Friday I collected my dry cleaning winter coat for the post office. I was rather stupid in that I didn't ask before I put my winter coat in for dry cleaning in the post office how much it would cost. What would you expect to pay to dry clean a winter coat? 20 or 30 quid. Oh, right. thirteen ninety nine. I got a bargain then. I thought it sort of rather took my breath away. I thought it was rather expensive, actually. Well, it's cheaper than buying a new winter coat, though, isn't it? <laughs> well, I mean, that wasn't... Yeah. I don't think 20 or 30 quid would have been cheaper than buying a new winter coat, would it? Anyway, whatever. Yeah, um, yeah. I've been, I'm going to go a bit serious on you now, because oh, no. I've been having a think. Oh. Um, 
about how all my life, all my adult life, all my, all my self-employed career, which goes back to 1977, so that's 42 years, I've sold services, first of all, accounting and then coaching. But as you know, that's no longer what I think people want to buy. I see them buying nice experiences, pretty things, weight loss solutions. But what else will they buy other than essentials? I'm not really asking for me, but I'm asking for my clients who might be able to say, sell, sell, say, retreats more easily than coaching because one is a lovely life experience and holiday which has all the benefits and more of the second but the second is a service which I believe people are not willing to pay for in our current financial reality and I've got a couple as we get into fuel your fire I've got a couple of um, um, examples which prove my thinking actually okay all right shall we move into fuel your fire then yes go okay My thoughts are that people don't like to have never liked to buy things that are open ended and woolly in terms of um, cost, outcome, etc. So, for example, we all hate to say it, but we all hate to go to the accountant because we don't know how much it's going to cost before we go in there. And ditto with lawyers, you know, so anyone who can make take any of that pain away, like the dentist. So, you know, I'd much rather pay my dentist 30 pound a month and and know that I was covered for all my treatment for a year. Than, than go to the dentist and have what's hanging over me now, which is a £300 bill, if I, if I go back to have everything they recommend. Well, could I just stop yeah. you there? Um, 1997, which was 22 years ago when I sold my accountancy business, people were already paying on that basis. So ask your accountant to set it up for you. I also do it with my optician where I pay a sum of money per month, which includes contact lenses, annual inspections and a discount off my glasses. So those systems are out there. But I don't think if you unless you ask for it, I don't think you're going to get it. Yeah. Well, I do remember one accountant, not the current one, saying something very strange, like we're not allowed to take payment in, in advance. But I no, used to just, rubbish. Well, I used to just pay him. X fifty pounds right. anyway. Right. And, and I mean, that you could do that. You could do yeah. that. I've done that in the past as you just set up a, a, a sum that you know on account and then it's not so desperate is it yeah so okay so bringing that back to, to your question I believe that people buy programs and they want those programs to be a fixed time they want it to be a fi- fixed cost and they want to have a, a, a fixed outcome but then on the back of that, that that's how I, I've always sold memberships is um, and in fact I'm doing it the opposite way around right now and that could be why um, I need to think about it again but I'd sell the Be Everywhere Online program, and as part of that, you get 12, 12 weeks. In fact, you get, you've got a choice of the support you get. You either get 12 weeks support, and it finishes at the end of 12 weeks, in which case I offer them ongoing support. And that's the way to phrase it, I think. People don't want to buy coaching because it makes you feel dependent on someone. I don't agree. <laughs> but I don't agree at all, but okay. that's not the point. Tell no. me what's fueled your fire. Don't answer my point. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. um, well, what's fueled my fire this week is I, I got so exasperated. You know how I was saying how what wonderfully well my Facebook ads were going? Well, I've, seen, I've been on Twitter this morning, and I've seen that there's been a reversal of that. Well, day after I said that to you, <clears throat> closed my latest account down. I do think we should stop talking about them because it's almost like, well, I mean, we yeah. already know our computers have ears. Yes, absolutely, they do. Yeah. So um, so uh, what I'm doing as an alternative is I'm learning how to do YouTube ads and I'm also taking an SEO course with, and I was surprising myself by doing this because I thought SEO was just you know, a waste of time nowadays. But um, I've been convinced by the chap who started Thrive Themes. Now, Thrive Themes is something I use and absolutely love. And he's a down-to-earth sort of Scandinavian type who comes across as very, you know, he would be doer if he wasn't so smiley. And um, he's very straightforward. And he's got this woman who's like a top SEO expert to, to work through his sites with him. And he's then talked her into creating a course, which he promises is going to be the, the, the 2080, it's going to be, you know, out of all the 80, 100% of things you could do for SEO, these are the 20% that will make the biggest difference. And he's talking a lot about optimizing your existing blog posts, the ones that are seriously popular and bringing you the right kind of traffic, about taking those and optimizing them to get into, get into the top three. And I thought, okay, so it's a minimalist approach to SEO. I can handle that. And, um, of course, some of my blog posts, in fact, I think one of them is the problem with with FB, who shall be remaining. Yes, yes, yes. It's basically uh, the, my best 
performing blog post ever is the one where I do a uh, an independent review of the Six Figure Mentors. Yes. And it's got so many backlinks and it's got so much traffic and it's got so many um, comments. I think that every time anyone puts my URL in and does a sort of search about what my site's about, I think it's coming up as MLM because of that one blog post. So I'm not, I can't turn it off or delete it because it makes me a lot of money because I put... I, I, but then you've got to choose, haven't you? Well, I've got to... Re- I'm, I'm, got to outdo that blog post with other blog posts that's what i've got to do okay, i've got okay. to bury it down the list of important posts on my site by having other most important posts on my site so i've started um and and that's by doing what's called pillar content and yeah, i yeah. super long blog posts over two thousand words and um i found the easiest way to do super long blog posts is to transcribe something you know have an, an hour's interview with someone and transcribe it and then put lots of links to resources have the video version of the, the blog post because we all know you can get to the top of google quite easy with youtube videos um especially for three four and five word phrases so yeah so i'm sort of doing this seo course and i'm hope, hoping that, that um it's going to help me bury that blog post a bit further down and and bring more traffic to my site because my traffic's been static for a long time you know steady steady as she goes but mm-hmm. not growing whereas it should be growing because i'm putting new content content on the site every week so that's what's fueled my fire this week i was even watching an seo video in bed last night oh dear i know <laughs> Phoebe <laughs> said the long winter's evenings are just going to fly by. <laughs> <laughs> She's right. <laughs> oh dear. So what's fueled your fire then? Well, um, uh, something happened over the weekend, uh, Friday night, Saturday morning, and I wasn't very well. So I woke up on oh. Saturday morning. I thought, I'll just go back to sleep for a couple of hours. And when I woke up later, extraordinarily, in my inbox – were two requests from what I often call old clients, but what I mean is returning clients, people I haven't heard from for ages who wanted yeah. to come back in my diary. I don't know why they feel the need to write and ask permission, given that they yeah. know they could book themselves in at any time. But anyway, I said yes to both. And um, <clears throat> only one of them um, immediately booked himself in and paid a nice consultancy fee. And then a third woman turned up and booked herself in covering for the second one i think the second one might have been a mistake to be to be honest but anyway whatever um this returning client uh who thought he'd cracked it forever he and i worked together for a long time to get him out of his day job and into very very grown up uh property investing with a with a huge monthly income so they didn't have to go back to work again and he'd got uh, he'd got as men do in their 50s sometimes, quite a lot of expensive um, accoutrements in terms of children and wives. Uh. Uh, But um, he sent me a PowerPoint presentation in advance, which I'd looked at twice before our conversation. Then I got him to talk me through it on the third time. And the first time I read it, I thought, oh, you poor thing, because I knew what had happened to him. You know, as, as human beings and business owners, we've got to be increasingly, and that's an important word, adaptive to change and what, and especially market yeah. conditions. And yeah. this, this week I heard a rumor and I Googled it this morning to be sure of my facts, but um, Pizza Express is in trouble. Yes, I heard that this week too. Now, and what it says in the headline is uh, Pizza Express hires advisors over a £1 billion debt rumours abound over fate of a 54-year-old business as consumer tastes change. Well, Pizza Express is a 54-year-old business. My client is a 56-year-old man. And he will have to do what Pizza Express are having to do, which is accept that consumer tastes are changing and reschedule his debt. So actually, when you know that a business like Pizza Express, which is loved by many, my, myself included, though, myself yeah. included, and, and Barrow. Not to mention um, Miss Barrow. I was not quite, <laughs> exactly. You know, it's loved and, and it, can, it can't trade successfully doing what we all love it doing in current market conditions. There's no shame if a solopreneur can't make it work, if, you know, all around us we see things like that happening. Yeah. So, yeah. nevertheless, nevertheless, um, although I was able to, you know, in that regard, but no, in, in the regard of ch- adapting increasingly quickly to change and, and market conditions, in that regard, we're no different to employees. Because when I was started being an accountant in 1977, if I wanted to, I could have been one forever. 
I don't think that's true anymore. I don't see, I mean, I've got friends and clients who do what I used to do and they don't make as good a living at it, largely because things like zero have come into play where yes. clients have a go at doing it themselves. Um, so, you know, that's a mark, that's a being adaptive to market conditions. Um, and I was able to get him to see his sort of business misery in the context of political and financial instability, global, because we're not on Ireland anymore. I was able to get him to see it wasn't his fault, let himself off the hook, clean up his vibe, work out a slash and burn plan and get him to, into action. And, and I think what he said was something you said last week when I was trying to talk myself out of being useful to my clients. He said, I'd confirmed to him what it had been in his own mind for a long time, but it, because he'd been, it had been going around in his head by himself and he was blaming himself and birching himself and all that sort of thing. It had sapped his energy um, to sort the problems out. And oh, I know because, that feeling. <laughs> well, quite. And because he could see that the playing field is no longer level for a man like him who's worked all of his adult life, it's upsetting and confusing. So it's interesting to have these conversations about bla self-blame and self-flagellation with a man because that's, you know, typically you wouldn't think they would go to the emotional place as easily as we women do yeah, yeah. and the other woman I, when she arrived I said I know what you talked to me about what you want to talk to me about because I've seen you on Facebook saying you've been on some fantastic training in San Diego and I bet your head's full of ideas and she says it is um and but she's one of those I'll be encouraging towards um you know retreat experiences not coaching she doesn't want to be that sort of coach to be fair to her but you know for how long is it I've been saying to you now when a new client turns up and they want to be a coach, my heart oh. sinks. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's the hardest sell on the planet. But anyways, what's your you fire? Two returning clients with challenges I could help with. So you didn't go on to say what, you know, you said you disagreed with me. So you didn't go on to say what your thoughts are, which I think the listener might want to hear. In well, the, in the... I think... Uh, well, my, my coaching programs are finite with defined outcomes, but yeah, I don't think it behoves us to have that discussion. I think there is a terrible risk with the place I'm in in my life at the moment that all I want to talk about is what's broken in the world. And I don't think that makes good podcast listening. No, and we agreed it was, wasn't very good from an Esther point of view. No, and <laughs> also, I, um, you know, if I were to set up a new blog or a new business or a new podcast of my own right now, it would be called The Red Pill, which is about, you know, and, and that's the one I took and I wish I hadn't. And one of my clients wrote to me and said, I now know what you mean. I wish I was still asleep like all the rest of the sheep. So yeah. I, I don't rule that out yet, but it's not appropriate in here, to be honest. Yeah, I know you mean too yeah. because i've watched some videos that have opened my eyes well you you <laughs> have that mark Mal that mike maloney, maloney well, quite, yeah. quite once you've once you've seen that and that's the place where my client was in um he was pleased to hear that he wasn't there alone but when he once you can see the unfairness it's very difficult to find your rosy place again yeah and it, that's it, that's essential if we're going to prosper it's so interesting as well, because when I was surrounded by these, um, well, they're early 20s now, they're not teens at all. And some of them are going the traditional route down their university path. They're in their last year now. Some of them are saying, were saying the other night, you know, um, I don't know what I'm going to do when I leave uni. I don't feel equipped to do any job and I don't, can't think of anything I want to do. One of them is going through a, a terribly sad time with his dad, who's a very young and vibrant 50 something who's dying he's he's you know and this kid was well I was kid he's in his 20s he was saying I absolutely do not know how to cope with this emotion mm. and I just feel like I'm everything is absolutely pointless yes and that was you know so, so they have these little conversations with me you know when we're yes. passing in, the, in whatever and I feel I and I you know Phoebe is constantly being bombarded by a father with links to jobs that he thinks she might like yes because he feels that she's not doing something worthwhile because she's working from home and he doesn't see he thinks she's lounging about all day but actually she's not she's working you know all day as much as I am yeah and earning a decent living at it without having to go out to work for the man you know yes, so yes, <laughs> but yes. he can't he can't cope with that because no, I understand he understands the, the only thing he thinks is if you go to an office yeah, you know, a world um, his worldview is is different I yeah see it, that. Is, it uh, is tell the boy by the way or the person the child that doesn't think feel equipped when leaving uni to get a job. Nobody is equipped for a job when they leave university. I know. I well, you've no, done there's another three years that, yeah. of study. In fact, when you, as an employer, you take on somebody age 22 has got no street, no, no streets, no, no smarts and no yeah, yeah. experience of work. They're absolutely useless because they're, they're older. Now they adapt, they learn, we all do, but you know, it's, it's actually quite hard to learn how an office works when you're 
22 as compared to how much easier it is when you're 16. But anyway, there we go. Yeah. So there I, I'm, I'm there dishing out advice and spreading the red pill as much as I can. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think you've got to be careful with it. I think it's a double-edged yeah. sword, to be honest. I do. I, I actually wish I had never taken it. Oh, you... you, you <laughs> you can't, well, you can't. that's it you can't you go can't back go to back. sleep no you can't you know, i've never even seen the bloody film you can't go back that's the point no but yeah. um yeah the princess has woken up and it's ugly anyway now let's go on to let's go on to focus of the week which is yours and which you're you're going to talk to us about momentum before you start let me just explain to the, the listener, yeah, if I may, yeah, that okay. after last week's show, when Nicola talked to us about getting a new business up and running in less than a fortnight, I did PM her to say, I do you think that would make a good topic for next week's show? Because what I had observed her to do, albeit on a URL and website that she already owned and had up and running, was that she saw a, a better idea. She saw a, a good opportunity. She found a backer. She found the software. She found the de developer. They adapted the existing website, and they were live with the new plan in less than two weeks. Take it away, Nicola. <laughs> right. Well, how? The, yeah. How? I, what I had at the beginning was because um, we know we talk about this a lot on this show, don't we? Uh, how to create an offer that converts, and how to create a compelling offer, and it's one of the hardest things ever. And the problem is that a lot of people spend a lot of time planning businesses and getting businesses set up, and they don't get to the point of making that offer to real life customers quickly enough. So they, there's a sunk cost thing about time and effort. And so what I found over my life is that I work best when I get momentum rolling quickly. And it was funny because I had this group that was growing despite itself and it wasn't in you know any of the fields that I work in at all but I'd never seen growth like it it was just people who love to go to a particular place in Greece where I, I rest my case by the way what was that what will oh, people yeah, buy yeah. 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 yeah yeah and um and so you know I started this group largely for me and my mates to have a way of communicating about what was going on in the local area easily and people started joining who come on holiday there and I, I was a bit surprised by that but they wanted to feel, because they love it so much, they wanted to feel part of a community. And that is a really important point here. People, even people who go on holiday for a week, a year to a place want to feel community spirit around that place. So I've got this group that's growing at the rate of 30 to 50 people a week and they're finding it themselves. I, I've no idea how. And it's just top 2,000 people in, um, I think it was under a year and a half or something stupid. And so I, I did buy Stupor Life, but then I got this shop. I remember my the merch, the merch yes, phase. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, one T-shirt so far. Yeah. But um, but it, the shop was still there, funnily enough, because I, I didn't kill it, because I'm not one of those slash and burn merchants who go around killing things that don't work immediately. It was just sort of sitting there, really. And then I had someone contact me on the morning that Thomas Cook went down, a friend, and she said, is there anything you can do to help the local accommodation owners here? Because although, you know, they don't have mortgages or anything, they've now got empty rooms for next year. And there wasn't really a central place for the area to, for the businesses, services and accommodation owners to advertise. There used to be, and it was a website, but it was owned by someone who's pretty much given up the ghost, I think now, because it's never updated. It's all run by volunteers. They're not interested really, and, and nothing really happened. So I was in a position that I could do something. And I knew that there was um, directory kind of software out there that probably would be a plugin a very affordable plug into a WordPress website. So I went and I just happened coincidentally to be going for lunch with one of my mentors that day. And I said to him, he said, so what do you want to talk about today then? And I said, I want you to talk me out of something. <laughs> I've just had this business idea and here it is. It's this area there, you know, it's not just this area, by the way, there's a lot of places that are suddenly struggling to fill their rooms for next year. And he said, Oh, everyone will start booking around Christmas. Won't they? And I said, yes, but where do you go? to get a, set, a central listing of places to book, unless it's booking.com and airbnb.com and TripAdvisor and stuff like that. I said, it's all fragmented. It's all over the shop. Some accommodation owners are on one, some are on another. Some don't, you know, I regularly see people trying to get hold of accommodation owners, email addresses and phone numbers in the group because they want to book direct. And, you know, the, the accommodation owner wrote their name and email on a bit of paper and it's all smudged on the way home, you know? So I see conversations like that quite a lot. So 
I was saying to him, but I don't really want to get into anything new because I know what will happen. I'll get this entrepreneurial seizure that comes over me. It's like a red mist. I'll go, I'll go at it hell for leather for a couple of weeks and the momentum will wear off. And, you know, I've got websites and businesses littered behind me where that's happened. A writing club world, anyone? <laughs> it's still there and it's still doing its thing, but I've sort of moved on emotionally from it. And so I was trying, he asked me lots and lots of questions and he said, how much would it be to set it up? And I said, well, the software is about $200 a year. Um, you're probably going to have to pay about the same again or perhaps double to get, get it set up if, if I can't do it myself. And um, then there's advertising costs because you need to get in front of the, um, the businesses and you also need to get in front of the people who w- will want to book holidays there. Uh, and he, you know, the, he said, the, so the business model is that everyone gets a free listing and they, if they want to, they can pay a small amount to upgrade. And the idea is that they, if they upgrade, they, it would only take one, one or two nights bookings to get their money back. So return on investment very quickly. And I know what they pay on booking.com and I know what they pay on airbnb.com and they lose a lot of their money again. So it all seemed right that it, you know, for me to do something, but I was still trying to talk myself out. And, and then he stepped up and he said, well, I'd be happy to bankroll this because it looks like a goer to me. He said, it doesn't depend on one person. It's duplicatable across all the resorts in Europe, if not further afield. And um, it looks like it, it would be very easy to get an offer in front of people quickly to see if they do sign up and if they do upgrade. So I came home with a new business on a shake of a hand. And um, he's, he's dealing with all the financial side and he's getting the limited company set up and the bank account, all that boring old stuff that takes is so time consuming. And within a day, I'd found a developer um, for the out-of-the-box software because I down I bought this software, downloaded it all, installed it and activated it and thought, oh, my God, there's so many choices. I don't even know where to start. And so I found a developer because uh, there is a – and this is an interesting thing for people. Don't go getting software written to Bespoke because there's often a software out there already, open source, that can be converted. Ditto with apps. My app man, he doesn't write apps from scratch to order. What he does is he hears what you need and he goes out and finds a, an open source app software that is close and then he adapts it. So the, the software is at the point now where, you, you know, you can pretty much find something for everyone, dirt cheap, rather than having to get it written from scratch. And often you can find developers who are expert at it, either on Upwork or on the website itself. I went to... Um, the directory software website and there was a you know get get your website built here and there was a list of people starting from $20 an hour which is unbelievable and I've got this little chap in India who he I found him on the expert developer site but we're actually running our job through Upwork so Upwork is where you know you get they you can either get a quote for the job and they do the job and then you pay them and it goes into a scroll or they they do it by the hour, but they quote you up front for how many hours they think this batch of jobs is going to take. The goal is to get it a minimum viable product to market as, as quickly as possible, and that comes from the that comes from the um, startup world. You don't need a perfect all bells and whistles site. I know, so I was able to divide this site into three phases, and the first phase was literally to get a site up there, get it in front of people, local businesses, and see if anyone signed up and for free and then the second bit is to get people to um, be able to work through an affiliate link so that for example you could have a rep in each 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 town who goes along and encourages local businesses to sign up for free but their affiliate link tracks them and then if the, the business upgrades they get a commission so i knew that was phase two because we just needed to see if anyone would sign up first and then we need to know how many people sign up it takes to get an upgrade so that's you've got to get to that point as quickly as possible because without someone willing to put their hand in their pocket and actually buy something or you know invest in your service you haven't got a business yet can i say something here mm, yeah this was the basis of john williams's screw work let's play 30 day challenge which was to bring your minimum viable product to market within the 30 days oh good for him hmm. and oh and and how many people did he have lots of people were able to do it I wouldn't say well, respectable numbers. Um, yeah. But you know, they were they were 
individuals struggling with everything we know everybody struggles with. It's not quite the same <laughs> as you, yeah. who is yeah. long in the tooth and experiences this. So, you know, they had jobs as well, or yes. sick, sick parents or young babies or something yeah. like that. They were doing it in their hobby space. But it was it was his point always, which is, don't hang around, get your minimum thing shipped or launched, or whatever the word was that yeah. he used, and get over your fears of being seen in public. Yeah, and, and you know, that's what the BFRO Online 21 Day Challenge is all about, because people have already got products and services, but nobody knows about them. Yeah. So it's about, it's about getting them to the point where they're actually visible because <laughs> yes. without being visible you're not going to make a sale <laughs> i think depending on how long the people who are listening have been in business this is either easy or hard along a sliding scale and i i appreciate how hard it is because my god there was a lot of decisions that had to be yeah. made in that, yeah. in, that, yeah. in that two week time and luckily because i'm old and experienced and i've had lots of different kinds of businesses i knew what those decisions were yeah, and do you know it's really interesting to hear you say that because you often think of yourself as a woman who's not very good at making decisions I do, don't I? <laughs> yes, but actually you had to make a lot oh, in that time frame and you, you, you did it based on experience. Yeah, business decisions are easy. It's life decisions I find hard. Well. So, um, yeah, so then I went to, I went back to the Facebook group and I looked for the, because in order to run ads, you need a Facebook page. Yeah. And there was an old chap who'd already set up a Facebook page called Stupor Life, but it was... Um, only had 153 likes and it had, didn't have anything recent on it at all. And when I went to set up a Facebook group called Stupor Life, I thought I'd have to go to stuporlife.com. Um, it turned out he hadn't claimed the URL. So although he had a Facebook Life group, uh, sorry, page, it just had a string of numbers after it. He hadn't okay. claimed the name. So, okay. so I was able to claim the name. and yep. um, Handy. Yeah. And that means I can run ads, which obviously is a challenge because my ad account's not active at the moment but we were able to set up a new ad account because of course it's a brand new business with a brand new bank account and a brand new card and a brand new address and it won't be infected by anything no no it mm. won't it's standalone <clears throat> and and the thing is you know my investor came back to me after literally a week and a half and said oh my god i'm so impressed with how fast this is moving he said do you want to do a couple more resorts before christmas um because, you know, obviously one person's... Yeah, but don't we, don't we want to prove the concept first? That's what I said to him. I yeah. said, A, I'm worried that it, it'll di dilute yes, my... Yes, absolutely, much. yeah. There's quite a lot going on behind the scenes. You know, just to set up a Facebook page, you have to make quite a few decisions. Yeah. And um, I said, you know, let's let's keep, keep it focused on this one resort now. And then, because I've already um, got a couple of other resorts in mind that have got the same sort of characteristics you know, rabid Facebook groups. Because, you know, why start a Facebook group for each one if, you, if there are people out there with 10,000 people in a Facebook yeah. group already? Yeah. With this affiliate module, yes. you can just say to people, we can give you a unique link, and you promote the, the site, and um, yeah. everybody wins, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so that's where we're at right now. And um, I feel still the momentum is still strong. Yeah, let's go to the momentum aspect of it. What yeah. is it that you want the listener to learn from this? Well, I think it's, it's, we all default to doing as little as possible. I think that's the human condition. You know, we're meant to be like lions. We're meant to have bursts of activity, eat a load, and then lie around for hours on end sleeping. You know, that's our modus operandi as humans. Hunter-gatherers, you know, we're hunter-gatherers. So I think if you use that and, and get a momentum going and get a product to market as quickly as possible, there is nothing so motivating as, as someone paying for something online it's when it comes out of the blue i mean you know it's still a thrill to me i don't know about you judith but when someone buys something without me having spoken to them i just get a real big thrill out of that and so i think if you can get to the point where people are paying for something that's the biggest first hurdle over i mean there's plenty of other hurdles to come <laughs> but uh, that's the biggest first hurdle over because you prove the concept you prove you've got an offer that converts you've proved you've got something that, pe that people want and that means that you're going to be helping people, who, you know. And have you done that with this or how long do you think it will take? Oh, no, it's, it's, it's <clears throat> a little bit more slowly to for word to spread than I hoped. But there is that is because my right club ladies have all been involved in the Marnie Lit Fest. So they haven't been out and about chatting. But I have heard that one of the Greek Greek teachers has started telling people about the site. You know, there's there's certain key people of influence yeah. in every yeah. area. Yeah. And, um, she, you know, Sophia, the Greek teacher, is one of them. So, and she's also in the Amdram group, which is another 
circle of influence. So, you know, I'm pretty sure that word's going to spread. And now I've started uh, advertising to uh, people in the Stupa area with a 30 mile radius. And I've also started advertising to all of the large Greek populations around the world because I Googled where the biggest concentration of Greek people are. And it's places like Sydney, Melbourne, Sydney, yeah. Boston, New York. So I'm just advertising to those cities, obviously the UK, because, you know, lots of people in the UK go there. So I'm getting it in front of people now just to get page likes quickly so that I can go past the elderly gentleman who's got the other page, just so that, you know, I can tie everything together and it all looks coherent. And, um, and then I'll start advertising as soon as I get more people going out i'm going to get people to go out and, and chat to the accommodation owners because it's got to become the central resource really quickly otherwise people won't use the site so that's what i've got to do okay and uh, I, so i know very clearly what each step is for this business and I, the thing i love about it is it doesn't depend on me you know it's it's going to be something that i'm i'm going to drive obviously but it's yes. not me having to put to give a service it's a it's a tangible asset with its own value built in without me needing to do be me yes so that sort of comes back to what you were saying earlier isn't it i think you'll need to be you in order to find the um right hand side personality types who will go out and be advocates for it in the community yes oh i need to be the leader and the visionary definitely yes but this is like remember the old thing about the e-myth where there's um someone driving the car someone on the side with all the sandwiches and the rugs and and then there's someone standing up with their head out through the sunroof pointing in the direction that you're going yeah that's how i always envisaged me be yes <laughs> we're standing up pointing going, yes. we're going that way yes <laughs> and uh yeah no it's been great fun too so if anyone wants to talk to me about getting a business up and running quickly or testing a concept i'm your girl yes cool all right good now um anything else you want to say on that before we move on no i don't think so Good. What is your word of the week? My word of the week is scale, because that's what I love about this idea. I've already started researching um, other resorts. Just, you know, and that, you do that just literally by thinking about the most popular places and putting them in on Facebook and seeing if there's a, a large and active group based mm. around them. Mm. And then, you know, off, off you go, then you can start um, approaching. And that is a great way, by the way, to... There are Facebook groups for everything. So if you're actually marketing something and you know who your customers are and what they need, you can go and find a group that might be full of them and start interacting in a non-promotional way. And that's a very good way to get in front of a lot of people. So I think I that's a subtle art, which most people I see trying to do it don't get right. No, they don't because they're <laughs> all, of, all about trying to promote somebody's, somebody's told them it's a good strategy yes. and, and they join and they try and do that and they get upset when it doesn't work because they have all the subtlety of a brick is what I observed. <laughs> You've got to get, go to give and, and, yes. not, and totally yes. and utterly share your information. Free. But it, it must be remembered that at that stage of business development, we're a bit needy often. Yes, that's true. Yeah. You, know? you can't be needy. So that, can that, you? No, not you can't. No. You've got to be abundant and that's yeah. good practice for us. Good practice. Yeah. Yeah. What's your word then? Um, well, it's interesting because I think, you know, I know a lot of words, but what I've realized that I do often is I use a word and then I think, hmm, is that what I mean? And I go and Google the meaning of it. And the one I did yesterday is cloying, C-L-O-Y-I-N-G, which means oh. disgust or sicken someone with an excess of sweetness, richness or sentiment. I was telling a friend in a private message, I think that word is cloying. And then I went, hmm, is that what I mean? I went off and looked it up and indeed it is what I mean. If you want a personification of the word cloying, walk past a lush shop in any oh. train station. <laughs> yes, it's, I agree. There's an awful pong, isn't it? It is terrible. A and completely it, overwhelming pong that I fear would stick to me as I walked past. Well, that's another. Is it onomatopoeic word then? Or, or oh, lush. The, yeah. Well, no, uh, I, no, cloying. Because you just said it feels like it would stick to you. And the very word cloying sounds sticky. Oh, uh, no, I don't think it is. But I take your, I can see this in your, no, I can see that, that, I can see that you can make that connection. 
it's not onomatopoeia, is it? It's when no. it, there's a oh, there's a word for it. We'll have to ask the listeners. But it's like it. cloying. It's like after I'd said it, it, it was it was perfect. Actually, I love getting the perfect word for things. But and I and I realised when I googled it yesterday the meaning. I do that several times a week, but, and I'm always right. It's just that I'm not sure I'm right. Yeah. You know, because I've read so much and I pick up so many words and I use them. And then when I use them specifically and importantly, then I think, mm, am I right? Uh, <laughs> and, I go, and I go and look. And obviously, I don't know the definition, but I think to learn the definition is fun for me. Yeah, yeah I love words too. Mm. It's very cool. Right, should we do project update? We might have to retire this section. <laughs> right, because because you've got well, you no, because you've told us your our focus of the week has been your project update. Yeah, really. well, also I was going to talk was about it? the um, yeah. how I'm back in business with some adverts that will remain nameless, but I might better not talk about that just in case they close me down. <laughs> well, it, I do think it's probably better given the experiences that we've had. I mean, when I was on Twitter this morning and I saw you saying this, I thought, oh my god, it's it, probably better to just quietly and silently enjoy that to the level whatever level you're allowed and I just le- leave it at that who's been on twitter on my behalf because it ain't me i haven't been on twitter since yesterday so uh, I- well i maybe you posted it yesterday but i i I've yes. only follow 50 people now so i can see what they're talking about and i saw your your seo course and you ah. were saying you were interested in it and da, da, da. so i've been on there this morning but i didn't say you posted it this morning oh okay um, well, it, or nothing to Are you saying you've got nothing? No, no, fine, that's fine, that's fine. We'll move swiftly along. No, it's going to be a short episode this week, isn't it? Well, that's okay. <laughs> Who or what's impressed you? I interviewed Nikki Duffy yesterday for my Resilience podcast. And, you know, we she had that massive tragedy in her life. Yes, yes. I had no idea what else she'd been through since then as well. And... She yep. is the epitome of the word resilience. I was nearly in tears several times in this story. Yeah. And you really need to... Does she, tell, does she tell her story? She tells her story well. And she but tells what I mean is, can we allude to the listener of this podcast what happened to her? No, I can don't we- think we should do that. I think we should let people come in and find out for themselves because it wasn't... It was the biggest massive th- tragedy I've ever heard of, of anyone having to go through. And I don't know how she got through that. But then she went on still to try and carry on setting up a business in the face of um, her husband getting sick and then him getting better, them losing everything. I mean, this is on top of the initial real big tragedy. And then her daughter got very sick for a long time, which involved long stays in hospital. Mm. And she's still, I mean, she's now just getting to the point where she's selling, um, she's, she's learning this this particular system of um, alternative therapy, which she yes. started to help her and her husband. Yes. And now she's actually getting to the point where she's selling courses in it, which yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. And I was so impressed by the time I got to the end of the story. I just thought, I don't know how one person can, can go through. No, because it's been 20 years. Yeah, 20 years of utter yeah. hell. Yeah. And still smiling and still brave. And she calls her business um, Choosing for Today. And yes. She says every single day I get up and some days I chose wrong. You know, I chose chose sadness or, or despair or hate. And some days I, but most days I've chosen right. And I, I you know, I just, oh, so impressed, really, mm, unbelievable. Mm, mm. So listen to that. It's, um, it's uh, on anchor.com. Just put in the word resilience and you'll find it. And Nikki's episode will be out by next week. Okay. When you hear this podcast, in fact. What about you? Sorry, go to anchor.com and put it in search on the word resilience. Yes. Okay. Um, well, I'll send you the link to put in the show notes. Yes. Okay. Could you do it like, and you know, I do the show notes immediately after. Could yeah, you do it like it now-ish? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Steve Fulcher. Who? Steve Fulcher. Have you been watching the dramatization of a true life story on Monday nights on ITV called A Confession? I saw the first one and haven't got to the second one yet. Right, okay. So Steve Fulcher was the policeman who was uh, p- portrayed by Martin Freeman in the show. And he's a real-life policeman who's lost his career over that case because, oh, no. because he didn't follow the rules of PACE, which is the Police and Criminal Evidence Act or something like that, which mm. was invented to protect the rights of a criminal i.e as soon as you confess to something or we arrest you for it we've got to take you to the police station caution you give you give read you your rights and give you access to a solicitor 
But um, in this particular story, Martin, Steve Fulcher, still hoped that the victim was alive. And that caused him to mishandle Pace um, and get drummed out of the police force eventually, but not before he had solved <laughs> both the crimes and got this man locked away for the rest of his life. Oh my so God. what it does is it hinges on what my friend Daphne, who writes books, calls a moral dilemma. Do the ends ever justify the means? And normally I say no to that question, but in this, I was on the side of the policeman, um, and so was the mother of one of the two victims who fought for his rights all the way to the end. And you saw all the different viewpoints and perspectives of all the people and the, you know, the, the parents and families and boyfriends of the victims and the policeman and his colleagues. He knew what he was doing, but he felt there was a, an emergency provision within the rules that covered his breaking the rules, but not the spirit of them, if that makes sense. Well, all, all those books we read, you know, with yes. the people in them, they all yes. break the rules in the spirit of them. Well, they do, but you're not allowed to do that in real life. Well, and, and, and it was, it was, it was p pivotal. A very interesting case, actually, and I don't think it, basically it, the the one of the victims' mothers took it all the way to the House of Commons to try and get the rules adapted and modernised. But 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 for Steve doing that, she would never have discovered where her daughter was buried, or know who her daughter's killer was, or anything like that. So she was very brave and impassioned on behalf of this policeman who s put an end to the years of anxiety. Anyway, the point is, you know, it's a, it's a dramatization and it's a real life story and it, and it, it hinges on this pivot point, which is about legality. Yeah. But after the, the drama had finished and there was a, a real live um, documentary of the ITV journalist who'd covered it in real time at Absolutely. the time. Behind the scenes. Well, kind of, um, it wasn't really behind the scenes. It was kind of in front of the scenes because he was, he was on the case from the journalist's perspective yeah, at yeah. the time. And um, I mean, I'm normally quite a strickler, stickler for doing things properly. But this, this did muddle my, my, you know, sense of right and wrong. And there was a sort of, well, well, there was a moral outrage slightly about yeah. how the police closed ranks and they did go on uh, simply because he he was he existed. They did go on to solve these crimes, and for them for the second one, for the man to be punished for the second one, whereas at the end of the the you know the first story, he he was only punished for the first because the policeman broke the rules for getting the confession for the second one. But it wasn't like separate occasions. We, they were out and about revealing the body, and then the man said, "Do you want another one?" So at that point, he should have stopped the interview, took him back to the police station, that cautioned him, given his right, brought the solicitor in, and, and they would never have discovered the solution. You see, it's a very do the ends ever justify the means? One of my favourite kind of things right, really yeah, yeah and and for a for a book you know when you get to the end of a book or a story i mean not the tr not the true life story well maybe only as a talking point you know and somebody says so what do you think if you go well on the one hand this and on the other hand that you know that's a good story because <laughs> it's opened your mind a bit hasn't it? yes well yeah. and it's made you yeah. chew on difficult things yeah absolutely Oh well, I must continue watching it then because I was I was pretty well, it, by the first it, one. Quite, it is quite slow to be honest. But you know, when you watch it on catch up, it's much faster, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's very good. Oh, good stuff. Okay, so that's us for this week. It is, and I'll see you next week. Yes. Well, okay. Love to, hear, love to hear about your momentum stories too in the group. Yes. So, okay. Um, good idea. You mean you mean the listener, not I mine? Do. I'm talking yeah. to the listener. Love not that. You. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bye. See you then bye. It's You've been listening to Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. Do come and visit us at ownitthepodcast.com. We'd love to hear your feedback. You can find out more about Judith and visit her on her website at judithmorgan.com and you can find Nicola at nicolacairncross.com. 